Hi, this is Dr. John Bergsman from the St. Paul Center for Biblical Theology and Franciscan University of Steubenville. Here, as always, to praise and worship the Lord Jesus Christ, the God-man, that he may be known and loved, and many may have eternal life through him. And we're doing that today by reflecting on the scriptures for this Friday of the first week of Advent. I don't know if you're like me, but the, the joy, the uh, the rush, the excitement of Advent is still fresh, beginning the church year all over and preparing to relive the events of our Lord's life starting at the very beginning, even before the beginning, back in the predictions of his coming, the predictions of his birth. And that's why we're reading the prophet Isaiah in the first reading today. Isaiah is uh, remembered as the quintessential prophet of the coming of the Messiah and of the end times. Um, in the tradition, he's often referred to as the fifth gospel uh, because oftentimes his prophecies so clearly describe uh, the events and the activities and the teaching of our Lord. And so it's uh, very traditional to, again, read through and meditate on the book of Isaiah during the season of Advent. And so we're in Isaiah 29, 17 through 24 for today's Mass. It says, Thus says the Lord, but a very little while, and Lebanon shall be changed into an orchard, and the orchard be regarded as a forest. On that day the deaf shall hear the words of a book, and out of gloom and darkness the eyes of the blind shall see. The lowly will ever find joy in the Lord, and the poor will rejoice in the Holy One of Israel. And I'm not going to read the whole reading, but I'll drop down to the end. It says, They shall keep my name holy, they shall reverence the Holy One of Jacob, and be in awe of the God of Israel. Those who err in spirit shall acquire understanding, and those who find fault shall receive instruction. Well, in this reading we have uh, another example of a recurring theme in the prophet Isaiah, which is uh, the healing of the blind and the deaf and the mute and the lame uh, in this uh, coming age, these latter days of glory when God will visit his people. And of course, we see that manifested in the earthly ministry of our Lord. Now, the interesting thing about this that struck me a number of years ago is um, when you look through the prophet Isaiah, for the first part of his uh, book, uh, he criticizes the people of Judea and Jerusalem strongly, but he criticizes them for their sins and for falling away from God and from not hearkening to God's word, for not reading God's word and not hearing God's word. And then later in the book of Isaiah, especially in the second half from chapter 40 through 66, we have these repeated prophecies of this coming age when God is going to heal the deaf and the blind and the mute and the lame, etc. You know what? Isaiah never criticized the people of Judea and Jerusalem for having too many physically challenged persons among them. That was never the problem that Isaiah identified in the early part of his book. So if that is not the problem, why would the physical healing of physically challenged persons in the remainder of his book be the answer to Israel's problem that he has identified in the early chapters of his book? I suggest to you that Isaiah never intended these prophecies about the healing of the blind, the deaf, and the mute to be interpreted primarily in a physical sense. When Isaiah talks about the blind, he's talking about his contemporaries who don't read the word of God and can't see the signs of the times. When Isaiah talks about the deaf, he's talking about his contemporaries who don't hearken to the words of the true prophets, including his own words, the words of Isaiah, as we know from the famous passage in Isaiah 6, talking about make the ears of these people heavy and make their uh, eyes uh, darkened that they may not hear and repent in that famous passage. And our Lord quotes that in Matthew 13, by the way, to explain why he teaches in parables. 
But my point is this, these descriptions of healing in the wonderful coming age are meant by the prophet Isaiah primarily metaphorically for a great spiritual awakening among the people of Israel. But because we are so spiritually blind and deaf that we don't get the point unless we see things physically before our eyes, our Lord condescends to our weak nature and in his earthly ministry, he literally and physically performs these metaphorical healings that Isaiah speaks of so that we can get the point like, duh, he's actually fulfilling the prophet Isaiah. Ding, light bulb. Okay, he condescends to our foolishness and does it before our eyes so that we realize that he is fulfilling the prophet Isaiah. But our Lord knows that Isaiah's primary meaning was spiritual. And so these signs of his healing point to a spiritual change, a spiritual healing of our souls. So let's look at the gospel reading. Jesus passed by, two blind men followed him, crying out, Son of David, have pity on us. When he entered the house, the blind men approached him, and Jesus said to them, Do you believe that I can do this? Yes, Lord, they said to him. Then he touched their eyes and said, Let it be done for you according to your faith. And their eyes were opened, and Jesus warned them sternly, See that no one knows about this. But they went and spread the word of him throughout all the land. All right, so these men have a physical actualization of the prophecy of Isaiah talking about how out of gloom and darkness the eyes of the blind shall see in Isaiah 29. But our Lord's great signs in his earthly ministry point toward the sacraments. Okay, and this healing this healing of blindness miracle points to a, a couple at least of the sacraments in particular. There is, for example, a sacrament that we call the sacrament of enlightenment because it gives spiritual light to us and it brings us out of spiritual darkness. That's the sacrament of baptism. Baptism is where our spiritual blindness is removed and we are given the gift of the light of the Holy Spirit and given the gift of spiritual perception so we can see reality for what it really is. So every time a baptism is celebrated, it's a kind of fulfillment of the meaning of these healing of blindness miracles that our Lord performs so often in fulfillment of the prophecies of Isaiah. But, but baptism is greater than that because baptism is the spiritual transformation that Isaiah was really getting at in his prophecies. Well, you say, well, that's great, but my baptism was a lot long, you know, a long time ago. I was baptized as an infant, as most of us were, etc. So what does it mean in my life today? Well, you still have the gift of the Holy Spirit if you don't drive it out by mortal sin. And if you have driven out the Spirit by mortal sin, you have a kind of second baptism, which we call the Sacrament of Reconciliation. When we go to confession, we are being healed. When we go to confession, our blindness is being removed and our spiritual sight is being restored. Have you not had that experience of coming out of the confessional and feeling lighter and feeling more coherent and even being able to think more clearly and see reality more clearly? I certainly have. That's because sin affects our mind. Sin makes us stupid with two O's. Stupid. Okay. Sin is stupidity. And when we get rid of that foolishness of sin in the sacrament of confession, it enlightens our mind. We have that resurgence of the Holy Spirit, which gives us intellectual light as well as spiritual light. We can see reality better, and we are able to deal with uh, our daily lives and those around us uh, in a way that accords with our eternal objective of, of everlasting communion with God in heaven. So uh, that is what the gospel reading is telling us today. It's about our Lord's ability to remove spiritual blindness through the sacraments in fulfillment of the prophets who lived so long ago. What a thing to celebrate uh, on this Friday in the first week of Advent, full of joy at Christ who, uh, who we anticipate uh, at Christmas, but also has already come and has already done
so much for us. This has been Dr. John Bergsma from the St. Paul Center for Biblical Theology and Franciscan University of Steubenville. Until next time, enjoy your Advent, and God bless you richly.